the lungs are kept within an articulated skeletal cage. And this is important because it protects the lungs from damage, but also it's important for function because it's expansion of the skeletal cage that allows the lungs to expand and take air in from the, from the atmosphere. And this requires a fixed point. And there's a fixed point posteriorly, which is the thoracic vertebra. And there are 12 thoracic vertebra. Each is separated by a cartilaginous intervertebral disc. And the, the vertebra are the site of the articulation of the ribs, which curve round from the vertebra to meet with the fixed point anteriorly, which is the sternum. And this is a flat bone, which you can all feel in the center of the anterior chest. And this comprises of three parts, manubrium, which is the top part, which adjoins to the clavicles, which are the bones that allow the shoulders and the, and the sternum to be joined together, the sternal body, which is in the middle, and there's a little process that sticks out at the bottom called the xiphoid process, and that's important because the diaphragm sticks onto that. The clinical relevance of this bony structure is that if you have severe spinal defects, a curvature of the spine, a scoliosis, that will affect the mechanics of breathing because that will affect the mechanics of expansion of the, of the skeletal uh, structures during respiration. And that can actually lead to respiratory failure if severe scoliosis is present. So the ribs are the bones that join the vertebra and the sternum. And there are 12 pairs of ribs arising from the thoracic vertebra, one from each. They're made of bone posteriorly, but anteriorly they merge into cartilage. And it's these cartilages that form together to form the costochondral margin, which you can feel uh, between the abdomen and the thoracic cavity on both sides, and also merge to form with the sternum anteriorly, in the, uh, if that's ribs one to seven. The clinical relevance of this is that the ribs articulate with the vertebra, but those specific joints can be affected by a disease called ankylosing spondylitis. And if that disease is unchecked, then those articulations become rigid and the ribs will not move during respiration. And again, that can lead to ventilatory defects, although it's a relatively rare cause. The 11th and 12th ribs are actually freestanding and are not directly involved in forming the thoracic cavity. An important thing about the ribs is that they with each rib, there's an accompanying blood vessel, a vein and an artery, and also a nerve. The nerve supplies the skin overlying the rib. The vein and artery supplies the tissues around that rib. They all run together in a groove on the inferior surface of the rib, just inside. But it's important to know about that because any procedure which involves putting needles or drains through the, the gaps between the ribs, an intercostal drain, for example, could penetrate the artery and cause bleeding, which very occasionally can be fatal. So it's important to know where those vessels run, and it's just underneath each rib. So this is an overview of the skeletal, cavi skeletal cavity of the thoracic cavity. You can see the sternum at the front with its body in the middle, the maneuver at the top, and the xiphoid process at the bottom, and the vertebra run behind, and then the ribs run between the two. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.